LDG Electronics provides state-of-the-art antenna tuners for every amateur need. An LDG desktop tuner works automatically with nearly any station up to 1,000 watts. LDG Zero Power Tuners are ideal for portable or mobile use, as they consume almost no current and can be powered by internal batteries that last up to a year. LDG Tuners are backed by our two-year fully transferable warranty and our legendary customer service, the best in the industry. Visit us on the web at ldgelectronics.com. And now, from Grid Square Echo Mike 48, this is 100 Watts and a Wire. Well, hello to you, friends. Episode 320, the first ham radio. And I know we're a little bit out of uh, sorts today. It doesn't really matter as much when we stream, but we love to have some consistency. This is being recorded for the 100 Watts and a Wire podcast which you can download and subscribe wherever you get your podcast and catch the live streams on YouTube. So this is actually being recorded in the morning. And a little bit of history, I used to record 100 Watts in a Wire on Monday morning at 5.30 a.m. Can you believe that? So it's not about when, but, you know, the release didn't matter in audio. But now that we've added the video to it, we've jumped around a little bit because today... We're recording this on Halloween. My name is Christian. My call sign is Kilo Zero Sierra Tango Hotel, and I'm here with Sidecar Steve. Sidecar Steve is here. Good morning. Good morning and happy Halloween. I don't know if that's something that you do. um, Well, we used to do with the you know with the kids, but uh, they're all you know gotten older and uh, gone beyond that. But uh, yeah. Oh, it was a lot of fun over the years, and uh, and collecting the Halloween tax was my best was the best part. Teach the kids about uh, Uncle Sam, and it's like uh, yeah, they they had to give up about twenty five percent. Oh wow, you did yeah, it like that? Fun. Oh oh, uh-huh. I see. You added a lesson into the candy uh-huh. distribution, where uh-huh. mom and it's like dad what? got. We went through it and said, "Okay, well, we grabbed our our faves," and uh, they're like, "What are you doing?" Well, this is a life lessons. This is how. This is when you get older. This is you know we hear us complain about taxes, and this is what happens. Wow, you and, greedy son of a bit, bit, bit. I can't believe you, Samama. You took the Reese's cups. Uncle Sam needs oh, yeah. Reese's no, cups. No, no, I didn't touch Reese's cups because that was no. my wife's favorite. Oh God, they're so good. They're so good. Yes, they are. <laughs> Got to really be careful with stuff like that. But uh, so we're we're recording it on uh, Sunday morning, and uh, we don't know how it'll be received. But again, the purpose of this is it's a, uh, a, a audio podcast, so the podcast will be distributed as it normally is. Most people listen whenever they listen, but sometimes and most times Sunday evenings at seven o'clock, you can catch us doing the live stream as we record. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. Uh, good morning to anybody who may be uh, watching. Thanks for coming by. We appreciate you. Didn't know Sunday is usually set aside for the Lord. Or, as Steve said, or they are sleeping in uh, slightly hungover, perhaps. Maybe watch Saturday slightly Night Live. Or, or was up a little late last night uh, working the CQ Worldwide. Oh, my goodness. Which this is, is so going fun. on this weekend. We're going to catch up and, and do an update on this week, uh, sort of as we went through in uh, Ham Radio. And we're also going to talk a little bit later on in the show. I've got a huge announcement we're going to do because uh, Halloween really kicks off the holiday season, sort of. You know what I mean? I don't want to see Christmas decorations in the store, but, you know, you kind of kick it off here with Halloween, Thanksgiving's around the corner, and then, of course, Christmas. So... With that in mind, I've got a bit of a, an announcement to make. I have not told Steve about it, but it's going to be a giveaway, a big one. And nice. I'll talk to you a little bit about that coming up because I think everybody here can kind of get going and get involved in it. And I'm going to talk about it in just a minute. just kind of came out of the blue, out of the black, out of a dream. And you're <laughs> like, come on, man, just get to it. Spit it out. Spit it out. But we're also going to talk about your first ham radios. We're going to get into that a little bit. I like to ask a community type of question to to find out, you know, what you're thinking. And we'll, Steve and I will go through some of those. You want to talk about this giveaway, man? It's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be really cool. It's the first of its kind. Steve and I have given away. We've, um, 
we've met people over the years who have, say, extra. Um, so we gave away a radio one time. Somebody had an oh, extra yeah, radio. Oh, yeah, early days. Do you remember yeah. that? And mm -hmm. we put a panel of people together. It was me and Steve and a couple of other folks who would kind of vote. And we took these stories and took in information, people who were kind of, I don't want to say downtrodden, but it, uh, having a hard time assembling getting up on the air and uh so people sent in stories and uh we would read them and we went through and we gave away what somebody donated to us was a radio and somebody had an hf radio and that was great um anyway it was a nice feel-good piece we did years and years ago this one is a little bit different steve but this is going to be his head cocked to the side like his uh his his award-winning uh uh, dogs he has. Oh, we'll that. Yeah. Yep. Bart, the grand champion. We're going to have a 100 watts and a wire $1,000 giveaway. Thousand, $1,000, Steve. Yeah, look Damn. at that. Damn is right. Nice. Damn is right. Here's wow. how we're going to do it. Here's how we're going to do it. So what I'd like people to do, and this is great. We're going to put some time out here, and I'm going to start. We're going to give it away in four weeks so 250 dollars. there'll be four winners over the course of four weeks mm -hmm. we're going to promote this now and talk about it for the next few so our first winner will be on november the 28th which is the weekend of thanksgiving so we're going to kick this Perfect. off here's how you got to get in the game all right here's how you got it. it's not even a game but this is what i'd like you to do i'm going to put my address up here this is my email address there's no gimmicks here this is just how it's going to go out i would like anybody who listens anybody who watches us to go to their favorite ham radio store hro giga parts whatever right pick out 250 dollars worth of ham radio supplies that you need okay don't go over 250 you know be at $250 if you can get close cool so go to mm -hmm. HRO go to Giga Parts go to wherever you get your supplies fill that cart up to 250 bucks take a screenshot of that cart for me and send it to that email address Christian at 100 watts and a wire dot com and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a random drawing for 250 bucks first one will go on um, November the 28th next week next week and it will end four weeks later which is the week just before christmas so four people will win 250 is, bucks right that is awesome you can enter four times one for each week that's fine and you can start mm -hmm. doing it today send me your email put it in but again fill up your card i want to see what your card is what you have when you're picked we'll buy that 250 dollars worth of gear and send it to you for free. No strings. No strings. Does that make sense? Should I go nice. over it again? So Steve's cool. like, where in the, is uh, oh this God, coming God. from? <laughs> Listen. This is awesome. It's going to be a little crazy. And the people who are here now, which is just a few, because I know everybody has things to do on Sunday. So they're probably not uh, participating in the live stream. But the eight of you that may be here. <laughs> go to your favorite store. Fill your mm -hmm. shopping cart up to 250 bucks. Send me your screenshot. I'd love your name. Of course, I'll have your email address because you sent it to me. Uh, I'm going to need some information because if your name's picked, we're going to send this stuff to you. Mm -hmm. And that's it. So we're going to be talking about this over the, the course of the next few weeks. Maybe we'll talk about what you would want to buy. What, what do you need? Smalls, like connectors. Maybe you need a run of mm -hmm. coax. Maybe you need a tool. Let's see. Doesn't matter what oh, store to be, me. It's, it's going to be awesome just to see what what's you know people need and uh, kind of just uh, so yeah we got HRO, Giga Parts, DX Engineering. I'm sure there's others. It. Yeah, and mm -hmm. and you don't have to worry about that. I just want to see how you how you're filling up your cart, what store it is, and then the Monday after the drawing, and that's it. We'll pick the name. So you can enter up to four times over four weeks. So, I mean, you know, one winner per call sign. 
but I hope that will get us into the Christmas spirit, maybe get some people into on the air. And um, I'll leave that address there on the screen, but it's Christian at 100 watts and a wire dot com, 100 watts and a wire dot com for our listening audience. 100 nice. watts and a wire, $1,000 giveaway. Okay, Steve. That's- See, you're happy great. I tell you, you're a little speechless there, that huge smile. Oh, my God, that's great. I think That is cool. just absolutely great. And I'm glad we're spreading it out. So We'll spread that's it out. Suck. I think a 1000 bucks in one spot. You know, is, But, you know, it doesn't matter as much, the store. You mm-hmm. know, wherever you dig your shopping and getting it on, you support whatever one you want to. That's okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, up to 250 bucks. You go over 250 bucks, we're getting a little, you go, we get a little too high, and then we'd have to do some editing. I'd prefer not to. If you can come in at or just below 250, mm-hmm. perfect. We're good. The first um, random drawing, it's a random drawing, so it's not a contest. You don't really have to do anything, but go ahead and do this. Go ahead and do it and send me that screenshot of your cart. Yep. What it is, you can don't hit, don't buy it there. You know what I mean? You're going to fill your cart up. You're not going to go buy it yourself right there. You know, but you're you're doing this so we know, know what you, what you need, and the person who wins will go there and we'll buy it for you. Right? No tricks. Is that all right, Steve? Freaking awesome. I like it. Freaking I freaking awesome. like it. I like it too. I like it too. So my uh, web uh, email address is there on the screen. For you Perfect. again for the listeners one uh christian at 100 watts and i will just collect them i'll put them in a folder and uh we'll randomly pick four winners the girls will over pick the it. Neck. yeah why not you just have a stack of of names and uh, you know very simple all right well that out of the way i was going to hold it but i know people don't you know want to wait <laughs> around and listen to that but you can oh, start today fantastic Oh, oh the so secret! Cool. The, the, so cool. <laughs> isn't it? Isn't it? Did I get like? Does it make sense to you, Steve? Did I lay it out there? Oh yeah, in the no, it's okay. perfect. It's. Uh, I, I'm going to be more curious on uh, what people need and what's going right. to be in the list. Exactly. And uh, and uh, maybe I'll uh, I'll slap together a list just as an example. And uh, we'll I, I should do up, that uh, this next week. This we'll came for so late like last night mm-hmm. and you know i i will do an example and share with you next week of you know going to a store and and just kind of picking out some things you know it's like a shopping spree or something like that with the 250 dollars, go get whatever you want from wherever whatever ham radio i'm not going to go buy your walmart or your groceries we're going to try to keep the money <laughs> going into the ham radio so yeah, we want to support our uh our radio uh suppliers and and retailers so uh yeah let's leave it at a ham radio related yeah yeah so uh go. perfect all right any questions on that you guys can put a cue in the chat room again you can subscribe to the podcast wherever you get podcasts sundays or when we do the live stream this particular sunday falls on halloween and i'm out with my children uh this evening collecting all that candy this uh candy tax thing is brilliant steve <laughs> <laughs> I think that's great. I've never, you know, when I was a kid, they were talking about, you know, you got to look at because we had some doofuses when we were kids. We, you know, oh god, who put yeah, the razor was, in the apples? Like the my razor. my mother was so sketched out by the candy. Is this one unwrapped? And I'm like, Mama, that's a sugar oh, daddy. I need nope. that. Nope, it was open. Uh, you know, don't take an apple because there'd no be a apples. razor in it. Meanwhile, and... <laughs> the apple orchards are like, Hey, what the hell? Hey, what's going on and, here? Uh, Oh, it was it was crazy back in the day. It was all the candy uh, you could get on the table, and then it would oh, be cut. It would be cut mm-hmm. because it had been opened, or it looked a little like this. And you know, I was cool with an apple, but m- that my mom was scared to death of anything. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know. You know, she would put it, want to put it on a scanner, a metal detector, and like you know whatever oh, it was, was because people, people were, were fools. Them people were taking them down to the hospital. The 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 stash or the. See? The booty there and uh, having it x rayed. <laughs> like, it because nuts. nitwits in our day, when we were young, were idiots. And, and oh, like, yeah. you know, who does this sort of nonsense? But, anywho, we've got a couple of neighborhoods nearby. Mm-hmm. And this brother gives out 
full size, like full size, extra size candy bars. And like, he is the talk of the town, man. He gives mm-hmm. like, you talk about Reese's Cups, the king size one. Like he, he's over, this is his holiday, man. He, and the kids he are He goes down to Costco out. and just loads up on the, yeah, uh, the kids the are time. loving it, man. It is great. Mm-hmm. So we're sharing a little Halloween with you tonight. Uh, uh, I believe Steve said he does want to run our net tonight. We won't do the live yes. show post show deal, but we will do a post show later on. And mm-hmm. if I get home in time, I'll jump on with Steve and we'll find out how many people we have to run uh, with the net tonight. But uh, but he's going to be on. So the net, although we're a little bit disjointed with it when the show is actually being recorded, we're going to have a net tonight, 7 o'clock central time yeah right about you know right when the uh cq worldwide contest ends so uh right after the contest uh if you're not totally burned out on uh being Mm -hmm. on the radio all weekend chasing dx which has been just freaking awesome we're gonna Um, talk about what beautiful segue you are becoming quite the broadcaster (laughs) what a segue i'm just gonna pause and and pull back the veil that was a very (laughs) nice segue uh, good morning to our friends who are visiting uh, today, Andy, good morning. Uh, Ben, and good morning, Jeff, Jeff, and Marty, and uh, others are here today. Speaking of this context, uh, is CQ Worldwide, and it's the first time in a good while. I definitely jump mm-hmm. on the contest on the 160 side because I want to see what that antenna will do, and it's usually stateside. Now I have a new antenna. That you sent me. It's a, a not a new antenna, but it's one that was in your arsenal for many years. My hex beam went down uh, several episodes ago. You'll hear I, I took down the uh, hex beam, which means I lost. You know, I lost uh, anything above twenty meters. Mm-hmm. So eighteen. I hope I'm saying that right. Eighteen. Max, uh, yeah, for 17 meters. Yep. For 17 meters. Um, I think we had 10. We had 15. What other ones go down to six? You know what uh, I mean? Oh, well, you have, yeah, tw- you had 20, 18, uh, what, 20, 17 meters, 15, 15 meters, 12, 10, 10, and six. Yeah, you had the full gamut on that hex. So when that came down, I was a little bit like, man, I'm kind of out of sorts, but Steve sent me this Carolina Wyndham that he had had out at his place. And you can see that episode. It's great. I take it out of the box. It looks like it's all been beat up. It's it's like, yeah, man, this was up at Steve's place. It uh, had a little patina on it, on the For, copper wire. It does, man. I And I had never hung up an antenna that had bare wire. And I was like, ooh, this will be different. It's got the patina. I'm like, I don't care. I don't, and, man, just to tell you that for some reason, I got inspired this time around for CQ Worldwide. I think friends of ours are, are running in the Discord. And I'm going to put that in the in our chat here we've got a discord group it's very small but uh, people are active in there talking to each other they're helping each other out which is the spirit of you know radio anyway but people are in there working they're spotting up these stations and i got some news for you i just want i know you know one of these but i didn't work that one i worked that one on 20 meters on my Uh a dipole right i'll talk about that in a second here's here's how it went down last night i did a mic drop right in my profession, you never drop a microphone or there's a, a production person like me trying to run up there and slide and catch it. We just don't do mic drops. But in the sense of the word the term, on 40 meters on the double bazooka that you made. So the homebrew double bazooka that Steve made and sent me some months ago. I worked for the first time Malawi, Malawi. It's nice. 8,548 miles away, 8,548 miles, and it was the soupiest muck of mess. <laughs> the dip S's and the nitwits and the D-bags were all present. Everybody, mm-hmm. all hands on deck for this work in Malawi. You know, this is uh, southern South Africa. Never had it, and I was like, and I ended up working the op. His name was Don. And I'm telling you, Steve, it was one of those six, but not just that, like that's fair game. Like that's a Mm -hmm. fair one. There was the QRM -er guys. There was the guys calling over the station as he was picking, 
you know, just kept mm-hmm. calling. The calls never stopped. You, you know, oh, you yeah. had the guys coming in just being jerks. So yeah. it, it was sort of not in the cards for me last night is kind of how I'm trying to set it up. All hands on deck, nitwits, D-bags, A-holes, Alpha Hotels. And we got it done. Like, you know, I don't know if they just tired because I kept at it for a while. He was like a 5'7", mm-hmm. and, and coming in here at a 5'7", through a pile up like that was plenty, you know. And I was clicking around. I had uh, 40 meters on the Carolina Wyndham in play, mm-hmm. just a little lower, but it's up high. So it was hearing him okay, but about a 5'5". Five, five. The one you built was about a 5'7", and then uh, and so I went with that one. I, I ended up running with that one and just tried. I did throw some power at it. I didn't get it on 100 watts. Uh, I was probably closer to 1,100 uh-huh. uh, at the time. But you still made it. That's, that, that's the But key. it was like you got all these adjacent <laughs> stations mm-hmm. garbling next to the frequency, right? Oh, and yeah. you've got all the all hands on deck. Everybody in the world is trying to get it. And, they, and like he was down low because there was so much stateside nonsense going on mm-hmm. that you really had to listen to differentiate wh- where he was you know i had to learn his exchange you know whatever the 59 i think it was 24 or 34 i would hear that he'd give his call he was in a pattern right. so you were catching a pattern between nuttiness so it was like a three phase nutty anyway uh, between the nitwits, I don't know if they just tired and moved on, because, but they were there for a good while. And the general wow. pile up. Um, I work Malawi on your homebrew, uh, and and that's you know eighty five hundred miles is quite a trip in that mess. That's like awesome. I could have had a QSO oh, yeah. with him if it was just me and him, mm-hmm. but I, I never hear Malawi. Are you kidding? Malawi? No, you, not generally. I mean, it. The, the, that's the neat thing about the. You know, like this contest, especially and in some of the other DX contests, is that these stations and countries, they start popping up, and it's a great way to work, work these guys and get your country count up. I mean, you could do a DXCC in a in an evening on uh, you know like last night or even uh, this afternoon. You'll be able to mm-hmm. to rack out at just a you know just a hundred countries, just easy peasy and. Uh, it's a it's a great time and the the nice thing about it is that these guys want it that are in Malawi or they're in Southeast Asia or they're in the Middle East, they want to talk to you as much as you want to talk to them. Right. Because they, they want the points. And uh yeah, it's not gonna be, you know, a nice, you know, exchange, oh hey, how you doing? How's the family doing? Yada yada yada. It's just, you know, five nine and then in this contest it's your your zone so for us here in north america it's you know zero three mm-hmm. and uh well depending where you're on in north america <laughs> so yeah uh, i'm a four i'm a four mm-hmm. and people I'm were using three. zero three or zero mm-hmm. five or yeah. zero four whatever or i was whatever. using four five nine four i was mm-hmm. practicing um yep and that's the exchange it's pretty straightforward and uh but uh, yeah it's you hear your call come back from that Malawan Malawan station. Mm-hmm. That is that is awesome. Let me give that you some more cool. results of your Carolina Wyndham, which is an antenna that Steve had up, and he generously mm-hmm. gave it to me when I went out with those bands. So I much appreciated this. But I did test it. I did put it to the test a little bit, and I did run a little power through it. Mm-hmm. Um, Finland, Finland. Uh, I think that's a first for me. It's so weird, man. I've been doing this stuff for a long time, but I've never got anything from the league league that says you got your DXCC. And I know it's in my log, right? But I don't remember a confirmation on Finland or whatever, however it may be. And I'm like, Finland, cool. It was spotted in the Discord. And I'm like, cool, let me see if I can do it. Um, I believe that was on 15, but I worked them on the... Uh, on the Wyndham whales, which I've had, you know, but you know, it's a challenge with the new antenna. I'm like, whales, cool. Let me just see. Got them another 4,000 miles. Uh, here's one of my geography class. I'm going to uh, fail. Madria, Madria Island. Does that sound familiar? M A D E I R A Island. It's another 4,000 miles away, but I was just like, I looks new to me. I'm going to go in. Mm-hmm. I, I could be saying it wrong. Uh, the Wyndham also got Greenland, which sounds super sexy, but it's uh, it was uh, 2,400 miles still Greenland. 
Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so uh, with your Carolina Wyndham, Finland, Wales, Madria Island, and Greenland, the one that knocked my socks off, which you know about which already, has... and the one in mm-hmm. the folks in Discord know this because I, uh, you know, kind of got developed a crush, <laughs> and I put some uh, weird pictures in there after it. <laughs> but I worked China, China on a. 20 meter dipole steve it is nothing fancy it's a 20 meter dipole i've been meaning to replace it maybe with a double bazooka just haven't and i'm like china six thousand seven hundred some odd miles and i never hear china and i i can't get to you know i i have trouble getting to like china indonesia Mm -hmm. there's some places i just can't reach but china came back to me like just like we're talking right now and it wasn't quick like it wasn't like this i was trying and even even though he was like i heard kilo zero and then he called kilo zero and i hesitated and uh i didn't hear him say my call again i heard kilo zero and then he went on the whiskey five i was like and uh but then then I got him later. It took a little while, but I ended up, I stayed there because he, he was loud. He was so loud. I was like, China, man. I don't hear China. Uh, and England. I worked England. I've done this before on 80 meters, but I've been playing like, let me go in the DX portion of the eight, uh, 75 meter phone band. Mm-hmm. And what, uh, it was just a guy in England. I don't know what part of where he was specifically, but I ended up working him. I'm like, dig it, man. I'm digging it. So I kind of was bitten by a, this bug and this all happened in a short you know it was probably playing within a couple hours you know from friday night when it started through last night when i finally uh got malawi and i'm like i can go to bed i'll do that <laughs> you you've been around a long time is there any stations that you just like what's your motivation when you play this oh I, well one is and you you kind of you alluded to it a little bit early you're testing out the antenna and you got a new antenna, and you're just kind of like, well, how's this thing going to play, and how's it going to, how's it going to work against you know everybody else out there? And that's that's what I love about the contest. There, mm-hmm. there, it's a great testing ground for uh, testing your antenna system, actually testing your whole station. Um, but uh, and then just working countries, and uh, and then the excitement. It's uh, I got a really good kick out of. Uh, <laughs> when you work china and uh, i was like damn because yeah i knew all you had was wire antennas and boom you're working china and uh and now malawi and uh it, it just shows that you don't need to have you know all this big hardware mm-hmm. and to to do it. it it's doable if the propagation's right and we're now you know in the up cycle of cycle 25 and uh it's just going to get better from here. Next year is going to be even uh, a little, you know, it's going to be even better. Um, I was a little concerned about this uh, CME that was uh, right supposed to kind of wreak some havoc and been kind of watching that, but it it didn't hit. And now they're talking about, well, it might not be so bad after all. And But uh, it's just fantastic to see and hear the activity that's going on on the bands right now. It's just been great and a uh, nice shot in the arm for the for the hobby because we've been kind of in the doldrums on the hf side of the hobby that is uh for you know a number of years because of the down cycle of you know the end of cycle 24 and uh now we're on the upswing and this is uh, this is great and i know a lot of people that, a lot, this past week there's been a lot of stations on uh testing out their systems guys are uh, just going yep uh, we're you know you know, uh, kind of taking care of getting things set up. And, uh, I mean, big gun stations were mm-hmm. out there testing their, their equipment for like the week or two before this weekend. Mm-hmm. And, uh, even, uh, DX stations are out there. So, you know, contests are, you know, th- there's a love hate relationship to it. And you, and you, you got to see some of that, uh, um, in the pileup in the very beginning guys are just they're angry because they don't like a contest because it messes up their you know <laughs> we've been here on this frequency for the last 45 years meeting every day and they get all just uh they, they just get butthurt because 
the contesters come in and it's like, <laughs> take a, give it a break. This is uh, just another facet of our hobby. And, uh, and so you, you, you see that in the beginning of it. And then, like you said, they get tired. They just kind of like, okay, they're not having any effect and they just kind of move on. And, um, so it, it's, uh, it, it's good for the hobby to have, you know, the contesters been, it brings in the, you know, these, these stations that, you know, and there's a lot of guys that that's all they do. They, they their whole, their whole gig mm -hmm. in the hobby is running the contest and preparing for, them. they don't, and they prepare for it. They, they strive for it. They, they look forward to it's, you know, right now we're in hunting season. So for the hunters, it's like, Oh, we're out there, mm -hmm. you know, going hunting and we prepare for it all, all summer long. Well, this, we're now into contest season and we're going to start having a bunch of contests from, you know, here for the next, you know, several months. And, you know, there's a lot of people that, you know, they enjoy that. And this is a great opportunity to, you know, get your country count up. If that's, you know, if that's a big thing for you, you want to go, you know, I, I've worked 250 countries. Awesome. If that's what motivates you. Perfect. I like it. It's, uh, you know, you, we got to find whatever motivates us to continue into the hobby here. And, um, so I, I was just enjoying the, the, people work and even as simple as you know like for me alaska's uh a, a it's a no-brainer it's an easy hop from here but for someone down in the southeast or in, or down south and they've uh, they don't hear uh, or get a chance to work the alaskan stations here's been a great mm -hmm. opportunity i've been enjoying just seeing people high-fiving and just saying yep i worked alaska <laughs> it's it, it's awesome and uh and this is what's great about you know some of the contests yeah do we got douchebaggery that's going on yeah that's but that happens that happens everywhere and uh it, uh do we have some operators that are not the best yeah we have some people that uh they just you know bulldog their way into or it's like the bull in a china shop they just kind of run on in and just start barking and uh and they don't care who who's been on the frequency or not. So, you know, I if there's you know, I've always over the years I've looked at if I don't want to participate in the contest, I'll just stay off the band for the for the weekend or whatever or dur during the duration mm -hmm. of the contest. That way, you know, let someone else enjoy the hobby their way. And that's what it is. This hobby is, you know, you enjoy it your way. I enjoy it my way. And we're all good. Yeah. So. There's an interesting been... story of on Friday before the contest started. And I think the operator's name, and he's well known and I hear him, I think his name was Giannis. And I put this message in the Discord because I was listening to him run. And I think he was just kind of, it was like a, um, a marathoner stretching out his mm -hmm. legs, doing some sprints, stretching, moving out a little bit. And he was on 17 meters. And so he was running some calls. He was not in the contest technically, was not happening. But there was another op, which gave him a hard time because that's mm -hmm. not part of the contest positioning where you should be running. He wasn't in the contest. It was a, uh, you know, some sort of tit for tat going on where mm -hmm. you shouldn't be here. You're a disgrace. And the op oh, who geez. was running told him, go F himself. I was like, ah. Oh. You know, so like, you know, and I just thought, for one, I thought it was hysterical. But then they got in tit for tat. He would run another call. Mm -hmm. Somebody would know who he was. You're doing great. Sound great. Like you said, they're working out their gear and they're just mm -hmm. sort of taking calls. And whether it's to get in the rhythm of taking a call, you know, just kind of get in it. Some of these guys are like, bang, 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 and it can be an intimidating thing to, mm -hmm. to put your calls out there. Uh, anyway, uh, so these guys were going, the one was like, you're a disgrace, you shouldn't be on here, and he, this guy was like, I'm not in the contest, I'm just taking calls. It was 17 right. meters, though, was the kind of, where the challenge yeah, like, was coming in. It was a little, you know, he wasn't on 20. He was on a non-contesting type. Yeah, the contest band. didn't happen, so he wasn't, uh, he wasn't doing yeah. anything, he was just running calls. Was, but anyway. Exactly. 
It was a thing. And that happens. And that's another good opportunity if you want to have a chance to kind of rag chew with a DX station a little bit and have a little bit of an exchange. Um, though usually the week before um, a major contest, like you know this past week, a lot of these stations were out there. And um, you get a chance to you know work some of the big guns, even uh, here stateside. And uh, it's a great opportunity to, uh, you know, work these stations and get a chance to ask them uh, what they're, you know, they're what they're doing, and uh, and they're more than willing to, to you know, tell you what they're doing and stuff. And if they don't, then hey, so be it. But uh, yeah, that's too bad. And and unfortunately, the uh, the one gentleman he kind of he fell for the the baiting that the other guy did. And um, he was good after that, but it was like, I was like, whoa, you know, because yeah. you don't hear I, it's the perfect response in most situations where you're getting mm-hmm. challenged. Go F yourself. Exactly. Um, I, you just don't tend to hear that on the radio. But he then he was like, yeah, just go QSY. Just QSY. Just go. He kept telling the guy yeah. who was bothering him, go away, go, go away. away. Go but away. so, yeah, and it was one or, of those things. Or ignore him. And eventually the guy will go away and you just keep and it. And it's like, oh, dude, you're doing me a favor. You're creating QRM for me, so now I'm just right. going to really work around you and uh, and ignore you. So, yeah, Giannis. Yeah, I, I didn't say. Giannis. I thought I felt like he was attacked. I don't think he was uh, a terrible op. And quite frankly, he was a very nice. I was very nice, generous. He was moving along through the calls. I mm-hmm. didn't see him as being. You know, when I looked over there, I was like. There's plenty of space. Like, why is this guy breaking his balls? Where, you know, if you really want to run, you're was, just getting into semantics here. You're getting into, like, the nitty-gritty was, of yeah. this band. The, it was the ignorance of the the one complaining. It mm-hmm. was, uh, and he's going, well, he's on. He's doing contest here on 17 meters. And it's like, no, he's not yeah, doing he's not contest. Contesting. It was outside the, the contest, the official contest. Mm-hmm. And it was like, okay, so he's operating contest style. So what yeah <laughs> get over it and there was tons Giannis... of open frequencies around at that mm-hmm. time it was like friday during the day you oh, know yeah. what i mean it was it, it was ridiculous so i was on i don't know Giannis at all i didn't call for him i was just listening i was here listening and was and was Giannis loud oh my god he have... oh he's, he's a yeah, big gun no, whatever he's working yeah. with he's a big gun and i think that's was the problem of the that other was op it, it was, was... A, Take it to 20 yeah. was almost his vibe. Like, you should go to somewhere else. And I'm just like, dude, yeah, he's awesome. not doing anything wrong here. He is working like that, but he's not. He's yeah, why don't you work him? Him. Just work him. Just work him. You know, stop breaking his <laughs> balls. But he snapped back at him pretty quick, as you would do in any other situation on the street. Yeah, almost, like, and Giannis is probably, at, at, you know, later he probably went, oh, jeez, I, I – you know, I don't mean to get it. I don't want to get him. In, I don't want to get him in any trouble. So I will not say who who it was. Just omit that. No. I, I could be wrong. I don't want to get him in any trouble. But no, yeah, that was, was sort just... of the feeling of of the moment. Was you know like, you know, come on, just leave we the guy alone. He's not. I've... He's not. But when you look over at the band and there's big, huge sections, like not, he was like the biggest Nothing signal. Going on. It was like, let me go in here and agitate this guy if I can do it. You exactly. know, if you really want to call, just go anywhere else because it was wide open. Anywho, just a little sidebar to the big contest, which I, I'm having such a good time with it. Um, let me, um, if anybody who is here watching this in the live stream, if you have any questions, put a cue in front of your question. We'll try to get to it today. If not, we'll um, we'll answer it uh, in the next show. Want to remind folks that may have been coming in and out, and to remind the people who are listening at home, we're going to give away the 100 watts and wire, one thousand dollar giveaway. And um, if you rewind, you can figure out how to do it. But simply put, you go to your favorite amateur radio store, HRO, DX Engineering, Giga Parts, whatever it may be, and fill your card up with two hundred and fifty dollars worth of gear. And take a screenshot of that and send it to the address on your screen if you're here. If you're listening, Christian at 100wattsandwire.com. I'm good on QRZ. I may not be good with <laughs> QRZ, but I'm on there. You're good with it. I'm good <laughs> on QRZ. I'm not happy with it. Anyway, you send me a screenshot of your cart, what it is that you need uh, $250 of value of. On November the 28th, we will start to pick winners. We're going to give away four 
uh, prize is random. Um, but I need to see what you need. You know, send me the cart, your information, and so we can put you in for the random drawing. Very simple, getting into the holiday giving spirit at 100 watts and a wire. Okie dokie, we did put out a question. I guess we should get to that, uh, Steve. We, each week, things develop, and I put out this question. We could have talked about the DX all day. I oh, mean, we, we, yeah, we could just, we like, peace out, dr- mic drop now, and be, like, good with this. this is actually a good show. <laughs> Virtual mic drop. I, 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 could, I could save it, but I've titled this show, you know, The First Ham Radio. But So I want to get to that. We, we did have quite a bit of response to it through Facebook, and we even got a little bit on Discord as well so we can uh, share that with you now as uh you know and if you do still do facebook i'm going to be on facebook i don't really put anything personal on there i used to and i only had facebook for my mom who when the kids were extra small they were she was giving me the business before she had text and you could text images uh over i used to you know send them to her through facebook now i'm here because our community is there and we've got a good a good solid group there, but you know, Zuckerberg's a little cray cray and whatever. So, but I'll put out a question there usually on Monday uh, to talk about, uh, you know, get you involved and in to let us know what your first radios are. The top 86 answers are on the board, Steve. So I hope you're free till nice. noon. Good. We're going to, we're going to find a response. Yeah, good response. It's a, you know, you know, I, I should give uh, my first one here. I, I will say my my first radio, and you guys have been uh, with us long enough will know. The Drake TR7 was my first radio. I hemmed and hauled about it. I saved my money. I think it cost me about 650 bucks uh, for the Drake, and I don't use her nearly enough. I try to get nostalgic and listen to the Drake support net on Sundays through the Drake. Mm-hmm. I can't see, I will never say never, but I can't see me looking to sell and move this. You know, it's just um, the, the nostalgia of my first HF. This is my first HF rig. I did have an HT, and so technically uh, I did have a, a an ICOM HT, which I like. I think it's the IC92A. Uh, mm-hmm. Where is that? Oh, wait. There it is. <laughs> I still have it. And I really, really love it. Oh, although ICOM is. is isn't a sponsor anymore, and I I left ICOM as a sponsor. I love their gear, and I know in the commercial world that may be different uh, for people who use things out in the in the in the work world. But this is my first one, and I got it because it could do D Star. I I knew I wasn't going to be working the world on my HT. And I wanted that maybe a digital mode could get me a little bit beyond. And so it appealed to me. And I still, I've got a different HT. Um, this is still my favorite, Steve. I don't know. I like the size of it. That's a good size. In my yeah. hand. You know, the other one I have is smaller. And it's okay. The programming isn't dif- that difficult. It's fine. There's just something about my first one. I more likely would lose this. I'm not going to sell it or give it away. I, I dig it. But it doesn't have the same nostalgia as, let me make sure I got the numbers right here. Yeah, IC92AD, it's called. And it's several generations ago, probably 2015 type stuff. And then on the HF side, it was the uh, the Drake TR7, which I still love. It's a beautiful rig. I mean, uh, back in its day, 1977, 1978, you'd have to have a little bit of coin to have Mm -hmm. that radio. It's a solid state. Uh, so today you can probably pick them up a little bit cheaper. Pretty I wouldn't, cheap. yeah, I wouldn't mind uh, uh, having the um, amplifier for it, but it's not necessary. I've I've got it all, and I can't let her go, Steve. I just can't do it. I can't let her go. I need to change a cable. I noticed it had a humming cable. I ran the the audio from it out to my mixer so I could listen to it on speakers, and it had a bad cable. So now it's just here. Mm-hmm. I'll show it to you, but I don't think this shot would will let you see it. It's right to the left of of those. But anywho, uh, Steve, tell us about yours. What you remember about your first ham radio being, uh, whether it's HT or an HF radio. What which one? Well, for HF, because I was a novice, I uh, I started off with a Arc Two. It's a airborne commercial. Yeah, you know, it was just a surplus radio. It uh, I used it for CW at home. At, you know, 
where I grew up and mm -hmm. uh, literally, literally out in the shack. We had a shack in the backyard. I mean, it was just a, and we made, you know, it was just a, a kind of like a, a just a, literally a shack. The B-52's and, music group wrote a song called The Love Shack, which Steve turned yeah, it into it, sometime in the, the late 70s. Shack. <laughs> Love Shack, baby! Written after Steve, Sidecar Steve's uh, famous and, shack. Um, so that was it. But as far as my first ham radio that I bought, uh, and, you know, granted, I was a teenager at the time and was starting to get into into the repeaters that were in the uh, in the L.A. basin, uh, at, was uh, the Wilson uh, 1405, I think it was. Yeah, it was a six-channel crystal-controlled hmm. handheld that was huge. Jeez. <laughs> by today's standards and you had to i had to buy crystals for it so you know order crystals from uh cal crystals was one of the crystal manufacturers or international and uh it was you know okay this is what i want these are the frequencies and and then you know send out the order wait for it to come you know three or four weeks later and then plug it into the radio and uh, operate that way so that was the uh, I started off that way and uh and then over the years you know mobiles and eight, my hf rigs uh my first solid state hf rig was the yesu ft 707 and that was their first uh delve into the uh into the sol all solid state radio and uh nice little compact uh radio and then moved up to the 57 and uh, beyond and it, yeah, now look at it. Let, let's uh, look around. Look at the, that. You know, the, the, the sickness has continued. <laughs> it's beautiful. That Collins line. I just heard some guys talking about how handy you need to be uh, with, the, with Collins the Collins line. Because, mm -hmm. it, yeah, I don't know, military type of stuff and uh, great great radios. And Dr. Bob, uh, K9EID, was uh, an early advisor, I'll say, before I started all of this with 100 Watts and Wire in the community, which grew out of many questions many needs to no answers i said what do, what do you think about collins and he said you know i don't know if he just sized me up and figured i was not as handy as i needed to be which was c completely accurate but he said you know you know it's great radio you just need to be handy you need to be able to fix those mm -hmm. and they need fixing they need yeah. love and you're always kind of and i'm like okay a that's lot not of me. love not me today that's not me today not and I, I haven't grown into that person I usually spend my side of this side on the microphone and uh, under the hood is not my forte. But I remember the Drake TR7 conversation with him and with you and um, maybe another local. And, you know, Bob was like, if it's not 100%, don't buy it. And I was like, oh, man, like, it's not 100%. Like, it's not, you know. And, you know, so he, he was kind of involved in that process, but he wanted, and I was at, I was chomping at the bit, man, to get on HF. And so I didn't make a bad choice. The man who sold me this, I, I don't know if he's still around, but he's in Ohio. He knew the Drake family. Mr. Drake, who started the Drake company, built mm -hmm. up playgrounds in the area. He had a huge factory where they, you know, produ I, I wish they still produce this radio. But, um, at last, uh, he had to retire and move on, and I guess there's um, what have you. But this man, Station, who sold me this rig, his wife got sick. He needed some dough, and I guess he charged me about 600 650 for this, and uh, I boxed it up, the original boxes. It's not mm -hmm. perfect. It has a couple things. It's been modified a little bit. Not for the bad. You know, you could make modifications to the radio, and, and he did some, you know, to work other bands and Anyway, so, but, you know, Bob was like, it has to be 100%. And I'm like, no, 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 no. like this answer, this answer sucks, Bob. <laughs> I did it anyway, and uh, probably with uh, support from you and, and some others, mm -hmm. you know, it's really hard to find a, a first HF used radio that's going to be 100%, maybe. I mean, it, it's not 100%, but it's pretty damn close. Anyway, and I mean, they're they're out there, but I mean, it's yeah, there's going to be some issues, you know, with the radio, especially used. It could be cosmetic. It could be, uh, you know, operational issues. But a man I mean, sent I, me everything I, like the book, everything I mean, he ever did to this radio. He gave me all this stuff. It's in plastic co sleeve covers, 
updates, things, and and when he had it worked on, service, the number of the you know the the contact number of the person who adv- you know I'm like, how, how am I going to yeah, do any better than this, man? Yeah, and, you couldn't do any better than that. So so I, you know it's here and that that was kind of my story and it and I still love it. I don't forget the terms, you know, of, of how it came down. I know it was about six hundred bucks and it was a big one for me. I had a. Uh, little one at the time and so every every nickel was counting as it is today um with buying gear uh so it was just uh th- that's kind of how it went down for me uh an ht first and slowly graduated to where i'd saved enough uh benjamins to get in the hf game and i've been in love ever since man i've been oh been in love ever since let's go through some of these i don't want to keep people up so they're missing their appointments on uh on a Sunday morning as we record this live. Uh, if you're in the car listening, cutting the grass, eh, that doesn't matter to you as much. Let's see what Guy says. He received his Tech Plus in June of 1994 at TR7950. That's a two-meter FM radio and a Kush yeah, mobile radio. Nice Ringo. radio. Oh, it's a mobile. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, it's a mobile radio. Yeah. That's, All right, I got guy. one. All right, Guy. David says his first gig was a Mint uh, Kenwood TS uh, 520S with the matching speaker. Nice. There you go. All right. Randy, uh, and some of these radios, I'm going to be, I got to be quite honest, I don't know what they are. I wish I wish I had photographs for every uh, one of them. I'm sure they're beautiful. I mean, radios don't really get ugly, you know what I mean? Um, but I don't know all the models. Randy says um, is, uh, H- HW101. HW was that? Mm-hmm. The uh, Heath kit, Heath kit, Heath kit. Uh, gotcha. Yep, it was uh, a lot of them out and were uh, sold and built. Michael, his first radio, I believe he's probably just got gotten his license recently. Radio Oddity uh, GA five S. Okay, he's got a cable so he can adapt it into his car to a two meter in his attic for a base station. That's good. I think in the early days, Steve, you're thinking about. Mm-hmm. Either adding on building to uh, flexibility, if you can put it in your car, take it with you in the car. It's hard on an HT when you're in your car and you're hanging your uh, out the window and you're yeah. trying to do it. It's it's hard um, to make those two meter contacts, but you know those are things you're thinking about when you're making your first rig. Farmer Rex, who's uh, knee deep in soybean and I guess corn right now here in Missouri. Uh, what is a President HR 2510? I don't know. Do you recognize that one, Steve? Uh, it's a 10-meter radio, something like that. It's, okay. uh, I've, I'm not super familiar with it. I've Mm-mm. heard it and, and people talk about it, but uh, Rex will educate us. Yeah, and uh, good morning to everybody who's uh, visiting with us this morning. <clears throat> Pardon me. And uh, a special hello to Pastor Joe. As we do our Sunday services here, we've, uh, it's only necessary that we have a, a pastor. Thank goodness, because Steve and I are going to have yeah, a real we, hard time getting to the next level. Yeah, we need help. Lots of help. Peter said he got a Radio Shack HTX202 VHF FM transceiver. It was a good starter radio as long mm-hmm. as you only wanted the ham band. Okay. Exactly. That was uh, a little... Side note on that: that radio was actually made by ICOM. Oh wow! They uh, yeah, it was made for Radio Shack to sell. So neat. Basically, it was an ICOM radio. Jack says his first radio was a used dual band HT a Yaesu FT seventy two seven R seven twenty seven R was a brick. <laughs> that was like my Wilson. Yeah. They were bricks. Nothing <laughs> they fancy, like a brick. <laughs> but a great rig. Nothing fancy, but a great rig. Yeah, that's all mm-hmm. That's all you need. Ralph said uh, he had a Heath kit, a CW radio. It's an HW8. HW8, yeah. Mm-hmm. A Thomas. Thomas says his first HF transceiver was a used ICOM IC735, a brilliant transceiver, and it served him well for over a decade. Nice. Okay, I hear good nice. things about the uh, that 700 series of ICOM a bit before mm-hmm. the generations that I'm familiar with. The 705, I hear quite a bit on the radio, and guys love them. And they seem like they're ones that you'd want to buy, but I've never, I don't have any experience with that. What's Russell running with? He said a Kenwood TS520. Now, that's a classic, isn't it? Yep, mm-hmm. that's a nice old rig, you know, in the same line with the FD101. Uh, 
uh, series oh, uh, from Yesu. Those. I would you know, still those, buy that radio. I, I think I want one of those, an FT-101. Oh, I'd put that in line. Oh, they're, in they're so cool looking. The I just uh, had a lot of fun operating. We did uh, the college uh, uh, club station we had it, and it was just a blast to operate. They're great. Uh, and then DJ, you know, the 101EX. I'm not familiar with that particular model, but uh, I wonder if that was a um, export model version. But uh, any of the 101 mm-hmm. series are just great. They're great hybrid radios, and along with the Kenwoods, the 520s, the 530s. Where, and what, what we mean by hybrid is basically the radio is all solid state with the exception of the driver and final, which usually be- was a uh, – uh, was a tube so there was a, a tube driver and then typically the the final tube was a 6146 to to get the 100 watts ken so, uh, got a johnson ranger i uh, also had looked at a johnson oh, viking that was restored one time and, and i felt it move when i talk when i say i felt it move i'm talking about you know what uh, I was like, wow, that is a gorgeous radio and then there's a matchbox mm-hmm. and so, so johnson was always kind of on my mind Pardon the uh, pun with my Johnson and Johnson, <laughs> know what I mean? But uh, yeah, the Johnson line is a very beautiful line. Yeah. Um, and oh, here's one. Really, a, oh, go ahead, Steve. Uh, I was really big with the AM guys. Those Johnsons, the Rangers, and the Vikings are just. Uh, <laughs> if you're into AM or want to dabble into AM, those are the the rigs to to go for. We're uh, sharing some information from our community question we put out there on Facebook and on the Discord. If you have a question you'd like me to share with our community, get some answers, put it in the uh, chat here. Drop me a line. I'll put a cue before it if you do it here on on our live stream. Here's an opportunity for Steve and I to uh, give you the position of 100 watts in a wire. Mike, his first radio was a Bofang, right? And I know this is a buzzword for a lot of people in the ham radio community, and it's like... Oh, no, I will not use a Bofang. For me, and I'll let Steve answer to himself, uh, a radio is a radio. It is a $25 radio that if it works for him, it works for me, and I'm cool with it. No, not judging him. Uh, So Mike got himself a Bofang, and it's just not one of those zones here. 100 Watson Wire is not a zone where it's like you you take a dump on somebody's head because of of what they've purchased. Um, they're in the game with the Bofang. And I know me just talking about it makes it seem like it is a lesser thing, and it's to me it's not. But I just yeah. know this community, not necessarily our community, but at, overall they look at this radio and the uh, – what's the other one? The, uh, the Wushans. The Wushans, right? The TYTs, yeah. It was just – yeah, they, they came out and, you know, the ham radio purists that kind of went – Oh, oh, my oh, it's God. not a four hundred or six hundred dollar HT. Not a, that's, not a Yes, that's not a Yesu or a Kenwood or an Icom. But you know what? For a two meter radio for twenty five bucks, they sound really good on well, the air. They got good audio. Just leave the guy and alone. A, you know? Yeah. Just, they're and, like and a lot of the like, prepper world. I think has gone into. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a tool for them. And I know exactly. talking about it makes it seem like it is a lesser radio. It's an inexpensive radio it's that an I'm inexpensive not. radio it's a throwaway radio if, it breaks, yeah, if you, you lose it, it away it falls in the water you don't feel that yeah. bad about it but you know what you've got a radio and leave people alone just leave them alone and it and it's a great way for someone that just got their ticket to kind of get their feet wet and not you know have a lot of money invested into um into the radio and what the bofang the wushans these low-end chinese radios have done is you know, the big three, ICOM, Yesu, and Kenwood have, well, not so much Kenwood, but I know Yesu and ICOM have kind of came out with a a more inexpensive radio, a little bit cheaper, you know, you know more expensive than the than the Wushan or the Bofangs, but they've kind of re, you know, reacted and brought in, uh, you know, value added or value priced, uh, you know, entry level radios and, um, it's uh it's great i mean i think it's uh you know another addition to the hobby and it's uh if someone wants to you know dip the toe in the water they don't have to uh, spend a whole lot of money to to get into it because you know as we know this hobby can get very expensive it can be what you want it and you know like mm-hmm. 
I mean, I think that's the point is that not everybody has the money to go and just pop on on some big mm-hmm. expensive HT. I can't remember what I paid for this this Icom radio, but it was several hundred dollars, and it was my first thing. You know, I'd saved up and budget for it. What it's worth now, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't think you can even get them. But so what? Anyway, this is a little bit more of a rant than we had intended to be. But I always like to take that opportunity. Like, I don't, I don't care, man. I'm not, I'm not sweating what he's got there. If it works for him, cool. If he's going to move up, he has questions about where he should go next. That's why we're here. If he exactly. wants to do that, Carson, what's a KNWD five twenty? Oh, Kenwood. I, yeah, right. I don't Kenwood. think Kenwood can actually go wrong. I wish Kenwood would seriously come back and. You know, growing up, Kenwood, if you had a Kenwood stereo in your car or your hot rod or in your house with the big old speakers, Kenwood was in your ear, fidelity, excellence, man. I've never heard anybody. I know that they've pulled back a bit or maybe not promoted as much ham radio side, but I've never heard anybody say, boy, that Kenwood radio sucks. That that radio sounds no. so bad. Never. Never, not, not in the commercial side, not in your home stereo, not on the the air. Just don't hear it. I like a Kenwood. I, I wouldn't mind having one here. You, now you all get me wishing I had more radios. <laughs> That's not good, you enablers. Jesse, uh, HTX 404. Uh, was, and he owned a Yesu FT50. Uh, Ed checked in with a uh, Heath kit. I guess that's HW16. That was for mm-hmm. sale. Got it for 75 bucks. Nice. Uh, Chris, HTX100 Realistic. It was Realistic mm-hmm. made by... Uh, it was a Radio Shack line. It was a Radio Shack yeah. line. I remember yeah. now. So there's so many here. If you guys want to read through these, I, I know we're creeping up on an hour long here, but we had 80-some answers here. I can't remember the oscillator by Chris Controlled. So, yep, that's where those 6146s were just, you know, the standard uh, final tube in a lot of radios. So, so many, so many here uh, friends have stopped by to tell us what they have. Hey, that looks like a Johnson Viking. There you go, there you go. Look There's so pretty nice. Now see some, some pictures. pictures. Beautiful. Oh, Beautiful. And see. Uh oh. Hope nobody's crashing or getting into a fire. Although we are getting close to the uh, to the end of our show, you can go. see some people. You got to go. Nope. Okay. Oh, I, I should have. I forgot to mute that. Sorry about burn, that. Burn, <laughs> baby, burn. We're doing a show. It's just a barn. It's a pole barn. You have to be fine. Oh, just that's kidding. coming. I know the the, the fires. Uh, so anyway, uh, you can see uh, if you're looking at this or if you want to go to... fifty. that's another uh, oldie. That's uh, a classic. Oh, classic, yep. The Swans, the, the 250s, 350s. And, you can scroll uh, through if you want to uh, You see what people are doing and what they first bought. Go to the Facebook, 100 Watts and a Wire Facebook group the there. The line there, yep. Look you can that. see what all these folks have uh, given. Now, much on a smaller level now... Uh, is our Discord. If I go over to the Discord here, just a few answers here because it's kind of a new thing I'm trying to work out. Uh, let's see. That's about our... Let's see if I can get this so it will show it on the screen a little bit better here. Ask the same question on our Discord group. Uh, Dave's uh, was a Radio Shack 202. He's Alpha Echo 5 Oscar Victor. Um, let's see. First VHF was an FT2980. Uh, Dwayne, Sir Pinky on Discord. Don, another Bofang. Uh, just yep. fine. Then and he the Wushan. Then the Wushan. And then he's uh, moved up later to a 7300 um, HF radio. So, again, do what you need to do. Get on the radio and try to support our brothers and our sisters who are making these choices. Sam's first radio is still a Retrovis? Retrovis? Is that it? Uh, RT58. Oh, okay. Ah, Think of it like the Bofang. Uh, like the Bofang, just uh, with better UI, a great starting option for only 35 bucks. Okay, so it's a, it's a, a $35 yep. uh, HT, just slightly better. Gotcha. Then the Bofang. Uh, Scott's first radio is a Linko DJ180T. Got it for Christmas. Good for you. Nice. And Don, he said uh, his first radio was an HTX202. His dad had bought it Sweet. for him. Very nice. Mm-hmm. All right. So there you go. We'll do that. Let me uh, nice. recap. Thank you all for that. If you have a specific question, I saw Ben you posted know? in there. He wanted to know 
Uh, and I can ask this question. We'll talk about it another time. I'll put it on the list, like what boom mics people are using. So I'll put that in the community, and we'll just see, uh, you know, this is another audio and <laughs> microphones are a very personal decision. Well, they come with monies. Hmm? Go ahead. What are yeah, you going to say? That's, that's not, I was just you want to talk about it right now. You're like, okay, we can talk yeah. about microphones. Yeah, because I mean, you can put well, it in whatever. Why limit it to boom mics? I mean, we have, you know headsets with microphones in it so i'd be happy to talk about radio microphones with you <laughs> girl <laughs> let me talk about our latest uh, uh giveaway we're going to do 100 watts and a wire the one thousand dollar giveaway we are officially kicking off the holiday season in our minds again i don't want to see christmas decorations quite yet but i have a feeling it starts today halloween oh, sort of brings start. it in. you're gonna see it in the discord yeah we're <laughs> gonna see the pictures of you next to well, that's fine but uh technically we are setting off our um holiday season with halloween and I'm going to run a special thing. We're going to give away $1,000. We're going to break it up into four pieces, $250 per person. Here's what you have to do. There's no strings attached. You just have to hold up your end of the deal to do what you need to do to get qualified for the random drawing of $250. Go to whatever ham radio store that you like to frequent, shop at, dream at, HRO, Gigaparts, DX Engineering. There are probably others. And go shopping. Pick up and put some items in your cart that equal $250, close to or equal $250. Take a screenshot of that cart. Mm -hmm. Send it to me at Christian at 100wattsandawire.com. And I will start to collect these, put them away, and you'll be in a random drawing, okay? The first winner will be November 28th. We'll announce it. That's Thanksgiving weekend. So we'll That'll make our awesome. first one that weekend. Somebody will win $250. It's not going to be cash. What I'm going to do is buy what's in your cart and have it sent to you. Okay? I hope that's good. Tell your friends. It would be wise to subscribe to the podcast, wherever you get podcasts, so you hear this. Uh, share it with your friends. Um, we live stream on YouTube. There's a great notification tool there that you know whenever we go live because as this one's a little out of our normal time, it's recorded mm -hmm. for podcast. So it's, you know, we're just live streaming because that's kind of what we do. But subscribe on YouTube also. Click the notification bell so that way you know. And uh, it's easy. Start and sending me that stuff. Yes. Another thing, uh, in your email, put in your shipping address. So that way we don't have to go back and forth and, uh, you know, getting your shipping address and stuff like that. So just add it in there. Yep. It'll be all confidential. We won't uh, share it with anybody. So yep. just uh, throw in your, uh, your, details. your uh, screenshot of your, uh, your cart and, uh, and then just your shipping address and we'll be good to go. All right. I think that's good. good. I'm excited about that. Yeah, good luck. Get in the game and, uh, you know, like we're getting into the spirit. You know, there may be some other things that we do, too. You know, Steve and I have things, we, you know. But this is our giveaway where we're going to give away $250 worth of ham radio gear. You pick the spot that you want to um, get it from. Shop around. Look for the good prices. See what you can get for 250 bucks. Put it in your cart. Screen share. Send it to me. I'm good on QRZ. Not quite good with QRZ, but <laughs> my email address is there if you're listening to this. Okay, Steve, this is the portion of the show where I ask you, what did we miss? Did we miss anything? What's going on that we need to know? Did we forget about anything? Well, the one thing I noticed in our list of uh, first uh, HF, or first radios, not HF radios, was uh, a lot of handhelds. A lot of people got, in, mm -hmm. got into the hobby with handhelds, and that's great. So uh, good on everybody, like I did. Uh, Me too. Back, you know, in, in the seventies, and so uh, thank you for everyone for sharing your uh, your first radios with us, and uh, that's uh, that's pretty good. But other than that, I think we got it uh, pretty covered uh, for uh, this week. Rosa asked a question, and good to see you, Rosa. Thanks for coming in. You know, we like to have the ladies join us as much as we can. <laughs> as creepy as that sounds, more Vincent Price on Halloween than yeah. Creeper. But if you uh, if you go over two hundred and fifty bucks, I mean we kind of we 
that we only have so much of a budget. So treat it like it's your money because kind of it is. Um, so, you know, if you get close to 250 cool. If you go over, you might need to augment your, your list a little bit. But I'm going to take what you did, what you put in there, in your cart, and I'm going to buy it from the store. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be shipped to you. So it's going to be like a real thing. Those are going to be your items. Okay. But good question. Keep it keep it uh, just under or at 250 if possible. I know it's not a round number, but, uh, you know, what you going to do? All right. Perfect. Uh, so Kevin says before we wrap up, he wants to see pictures of Steve's new antenna. Okay. Bring on the double bazooka. Uh, you want to see. I don't have his um, his tower shot queued up, but he does have another project. That may uh, get you in the feels. Let's see if I can uh, show this. This is kind of what he's looking to do next. This is uh, back of Steve's truck. And for those listening at home or on your flight or on the treadmill, it is a pick em up truck full of, is it the Rome Tower sections? You're going to build another Rome, tower? Rome you 45. Summon, yep. Rome 45. How high are we going? Uh, this uh, I got nine sections there, so we're going to go probably 80 feet. Woo, baby. Oh, yes. We're going to be talking about that in the coming days. All right, friends. Thank you for sharing your time with us uh, early on a Sunday. I know you have things to do, and uh, we went a little bit longer than normal, but there's so much to talk about, and there's so much things to do and happy to be. Um, so Steve and I will catch you on the air. Steve will be on tonight if you're watching this live he'll be on tonight seven o'clock central for the 100 watts and wire sunday evening right HF after the D, uh, cq worldwide so. right after the contest so. and if your ears aren't bleeding and you want to have a nice thing i had to go to 160 because it was it was so like it's in your head like the garbling sounds of the contest i had to go to 160 just to like deflate and hear Mm-hmm. And that's where or... the work bands come into play. And that's where the one guy was kind of butthurt because someone was what he perceived was contesting on 17 meters. So if you kind of that, that's what's kind of neat about, you know, we got the work bands that it became the the mm-hmm. contest free zone. And uh, so it's uh, it's a, you know, uh, a good place to kind of just, you know, if you want to still play radio, but don't want to, you know, fight with the uh, with the contest crowd, then 17, 12 meters is a 30 meters is a great place to we go. Need, and uh, we need to and get your out. antenna on 160, Steve. We need to do that. We'll set up a night. You know, maybe we could stream that. Steve and I will uh, will go on 160, test his antenna, see if we can make the trip. And uh, and if you guys have 160, you can join us or at least listen through here. I don't know what we'll do, but. We need to test it. It's up there. You went. You worked hard to build it and hang it. Yep. It's time. It's up. <laughs> Seventy-three to us. Floor was be- I wish the noise floor wasn't up. <laughs> That's but, crazy. That's crazy where you are. But crazy noise floor. Yeah. Everything. All my other bands are like next to nothing, and there's one sixty. It's like bam. <laughs> That's weird. All right. Take yep. care of yourselves. Look out for each other. Uh, drop me your screenshots of if you don't know how to do that we'll have to maybe set up a tutorial next week to do that we're going to talk about this and get the ball rolling for the next two or three weeks and we'll start collecting this information your information what you need and uh, november 28th will be our first uh, and push winner. comes to shove you can always use your cell phone take a picture of the screen okay if yeah you can't do a screenshot that's all got options All right, 73 uh, to everybody. Thank you, Steve, for waking up early. It's good to be with you always and have fun. Uh, Good show today. Good show. I think we fooled them again. Uh, (laughs) We did it again. Take care of yourselves and each other. And uh, by all means, if you can, please try and stay above the noise. 73, guys. 73, everyone. To join the 100 Watts and a Wire community, visit 100wattsandawire.com.